three sons grew up and they decided they wanted to do something for their mother and they had really done well in life. They had all prospered. So the first son thought he would do something for his mom. He bought her a big house, paid for it cash. It was completely decorated. All the furniture had a swimming pool. Oh, she loved it. The second son, he buys the best Mercedes he can buy. And he gets a driver on call 24-7 to drive his mom anywhere she wants to go in the Mercedes. Oh, she loved it. The third brother goes, I got something special. He goes to this church. This church has a parrot. They've been training the parrot for 10 years to memorize the Bible. You just say Psalm 23, verse 1, and the parrot can recite the verse, any verse in the Bible. He knows his mom loves the Bible. Her eyes are getting bad. What a perfect gift. She loves it. Well, she's writing thank you notes a little bit later after Mother's Day, and she says to her first son, you know, I love the house. It's so beautiful. My goodness, what a great gift. But it's so big. I only live in two rooms of it. It's hard to clean, but thank you so much. She writes a thank you letter to the second son, and she says, oh, the Mercedes, what a gorgeous car, and I could go anywhere. What freedom, but I never go anywhere, and the chauffeur is kind of kind of rude, but thank you so much. To the third son, she writes, Gerald, you know your mama. Oh, what a perfect gift. The chicken was delicious. <laughs> How many of you go, my mom is not that dumb? <laughs> How many of you love Jesus? Say amen. amen. Well, Jesus loved his mother, Mary. In fact, he loved Mary so much when he's hanging on the cross dying, he made sure she would be taken care of. That's some love right there. That means all of us should love our moms too. Today, I want to talk about moms, you inspire me. I love this Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 31, verse 30 and 31. I'd like for us to read it out loud. Would you do that with me? Let's read it out loud. It's up on the screen. Let's read it nice and loud. Charm is deceptive, and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her the reward she has earned, and let her works bring her praise at the city gates. Would it be okay if I tell my mom, Happy Mother's Day online? Hi, Mom. Happy Mother's Day. <laughs> and my mother-in-law, Hi, Mom. Happy Mother's Day. <laughs> and Sandy, you're sitting out there. Happy Mother's Day. Okay, so now we can move on. <laughs> If you have your Bible with you, turn with me now to Matthew chapter 20. Matthew chapter 20. But if you don't have a Bible, it's all going to be on the screen for you. Matthew chapter 20. We're going to look at a story of a mom who steps up to the plate on behalf of her sons. Great moms inspire me to, number one, intercede on my knees for a breakthrough. If you need a breakthrough this morning, this is your story. Starting in verse 20, it says, Then the mother of Zebedee's sons came to Jesus with her sons and kneeling down, asked a favor of him. Now, from other passages of the Bible, we know this lady, her name is Salome, not Salami, Salome. <laughs> and most Bible scholars believe that Salome was actually the sister of Mary, the mother of Jesus. So that means Aunt Salome and James and John would have to be her or Jesus' cousins. So Jesus gave them an interesting nickname in Mark 3.17. It says, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, to them he gave the name Boanerges, which means sons of thunder. These boys were like the Dukes of Hazard. <laughs> One time some people insulted these guys. They insulted Jesus, actually. And look at what their solution was in Luke 9, 54. It says, when the disciples, James and John, saw this, they asked, Lord, do you want us to call down fire from heaven and destroy them? Wow. <laughs> That's a little, a little dramatic, don't you think? Go back and circle a the phrase there about Salome, though. It says, kneeling down. This mom knelt down in front of Jesus to ask Jesus for something. And it's even more remarkable because she could have thought to herself, why do I have to kneel? I mean, this is my nephew, Jesus. 
But here is the punchline for this message. The best way to change things in your life is to get on your knees and pray. How many of you could give a testimony? Get on your knees and pray. Some of you do not realize you are in church today because your mama got on her knees and prayed you in here today. You might say, no, I drove a car here. No, your mama prayed you here. How many could testify? My mom is the reason I'm, I'm not a disaster, right? <laughs> Ladies, you care for us in so many ways. You patiently serve us and clean up after us and encourage us and talk to us and love on us. And you rinse and repeat over and over and over. We're sure you get tired of it. So regardless of whether you are a mom or not, all the ladies, all the girls, would you do us a favor and just stand to your feet for just a moment and remain standing. All the ladies, girls, moms, married or not, mom or not, just stand for a second. And guys, I want to hear you rip the roof off this place. Give them a big cheer. Thank you so much. Thank you for all you do. You are a blessing. You are awesome. Thank you so much. You can be seated. All right, that was only point number one. You ready for number two? <laughs> See the potential in people around me. So Salome's kneeling in front of Jesus. Jesus answered her, what is it you want, he asked. She said, grant that one of these two sons of mine may sit at your right and the other at the left in your kingdom. <laughs> so think about this. Here's this mom. She's a blood relative of Jesus. She's no doubt watched what's been happening. Three years of Jesus' ministry. In her mind, she's probably thinking, this Jesus is going to go places. He's healing blind people. He's curing leprosy. He's amazing. He's casting demons out of people. And my boys are go-getters. And hey, Jesus is my nephew. So... I'm going to take the bull by the horns here. I'm going to ask Jesus to carve out a spot at the top of the organization for my boys. Salome believed in her sons. She believed they could help Jesus. How many of moms have ever stepped up to help out your kids? Anybody ever stepped up and said, hey, my son's a really good photographer. Hey, my daughter designs websites. Hey, you know what? My son could run that company for you. Hey, you know what? My daughter is phenomenal. Your company will never go anywhere unless you are my daughter. How many moms have done that? Be proud right now. Raise your hand. That's right. I did it. I took the bull by the horns. Only 12 of you. Okay, the rest of you need to step up for your kids. If you want to have an amazing life, here's how you do it. Listen up. See the potential in people that they themselves cannot see. See in them what they themselves can't see. Our world right now is full of people who doubt themselves, who have been beat down, people who have been set, told, you will never make it. You will never amount to anything. You don't have what it takes. You're too old. You're too young. You're too ugly. You're too whatever. And you know what? You can reverse that. You can change it. You talk to somebody and you go, you know what? I've seen that in you from the day one. I've always said you could do something amazing. I've always said that you'd have your own company. I've always said that you'd have 12 companies. I've always thought you could do that. How many want to hear more of that right now? You could do it. You have the ability. Be the person that believes in others. And moms, they believe in us even when other people don't. How many would you say at least one time in your life, your mom gave you some good advice. Raise your hands. Here, let me refresh your memory. You're just not remembering. <laughs> I'll start the phrase, and let's see if you can finish it up, all right? You just shout it out real loud. Here we go. Be careful with that stick or you'll poke. Oh, see, so you do remember. <laughs> don't put that in your mouth. You don't know. Close that door, were you? <laughs> Young man, look at me when I'm... Pick that up before somebody trips on it and... Or falls or breaks their necks. And some moms take it up and on, it breaks your neck. <laughs> you can't judge a book. If I've told you once, I've... 
I think we had the same mom. <laughs> And probably the most famous mom advice of all time, if you can't say something nice, <laughs> give mom a big hand for all the advice she gave you. <laughs> and moms, number three, link arms with those facing a challenge. Now, how does Jesus answer the request of Aunt Salome? Verse 22, you don't know what you're asking. <laughs> Jesus says to them, can you drink the cup I'm going to drink? We can, they answered. I love this. This is so incredible. The answer, we can. They have no idea what they're answering, you know. Jesus says, here's this mom. She's coming in and the boy on one side of her, boy on the other, you know. And, and, and she's like linking up arms with them probably. And, and she's saying, yes, Jesus, we can do this. With your help, we can do this. Why would they have the audacity to think that they could drink the cup that Jesus was going to drink? He was talking about his torture and crucifixion that was about three weeks away. But James and John were probably thinking of something a lot more pleasant because about three or four weeks before in Matthew chapter 17 in the transfiguration in verse 1, it describes what happened. It says, after six days, Jesus took with him, listen to these names, Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. There they are, the Boanerges, the sons of thunder. And he led them up a high mountain by themselves. There he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became as white as the light. Just then there appeared before them Moses and Elijah talking with Jesus. Wow, excuse me, Salome, your boys are in the top three already. What are you worried about? And then they had seen Jesus in his glorified state. They got to see Moses and Elijah on top of the mountain. Hello. Then they heard the voice of God the Father. This is my son in whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. <laughs> wow. So James and John must have thought, yeah, the cup you can drink. Yeah, we got the power. You know, they're like, this is going to be awesome. Sure, we can drink from that cup. Turns out they did drink of the cup that Jesus was talking about. The Bible tells us these two brothers, the sons of thunder, they ended up doing amazing things in the name of Jesus. James ended up actually being the first disciple martyred out of the twelve. King Agrippa had him beheaded. He said to him, will you stop? Will you denounce Jesus? Will you say you don't believe in him or else you're going to die? And James said, I believe in Jesus. He's the son of God. He's the savior of the world. I will never renounce him. <laughs> and you go, wow. <laughs> so that's not a very good ending, Pastor Lee. Yes, it is. The minute his head went off, he walked into the gates of heaven, and Jesus goes, James, well done, my good and faithful servant. Enter your master's happiness. Welcome to heaven. How many think that's a great way to go? <laughs> Here's the thing. No matter how bad you're, you know, we're all going to die. You're like, Lee, what a great Mother's Day message. We're all going to die. Thank you so much. We all are going to go down that road. So the question is, what are you going to do prior to that? Don't worry about how you're going to die. What, worry about what happens right after you die. That's what's important. We're all going. We're all going to go. Somebody here may go today. If you're a Christian, that's called a homecoming. That's called a celebration. That's called getting your reward. That's called, I'm finally with Jesus. No more pain, no more tears, no more crying. How many agree heaven's going to be awesome? It's going to be incredible. I tell you that because someday it's actually getting more real. The persecution of Christians is way higher than it used to be. Someday somebody may stand there and port, point an assault rifle at you and say, denounce Jesus or I'm killing you right now. And you know what? That'll be the time to say, yes, I believe in Jesus. Plink. And then you will walk up and you'll tap on the pearly gates. And Jesus opens it. Hey! Welcome to heaven. <laughs> See, it doesn't matter how you go. It's all about heaven. Then John, let's talk about John. John wrote the book of Revelation. 
Jesus sent him to a deserted island called Patmos. He got this incredible vision and dream of the future, and Jesus said, write it down, and everybody who reads it will receive a blessing. Do you know that it says that in the book of Revelation? And then we heard of, it's, it's called end times. What's going to happen in the future? What's going to happen at the end of the age? And there's stuff in there about the mark of the beast and, and the most famous number in the Bible, which is 666. That's like Mufasa. Ooh, do it again. Mufasa, you know. <laughs> These sons of thunder did a lot in their lives. See, no matter how you are feeling right now, Jesus wants to link arms with you. He wants to be the way. He knows how you're feeling. He wants to forgive you. He wants you to forgive others. He wants you to leave here today with a special blessing. The first step is you have to accept him as your savior. You don't have to do anything. Christianity is the only religion that doesn't have something to do with do. It has to do with done. It's already been done. All you have to say is, I accept. I accept, Jesus, what you already did for me. If you've never taken that step, I'm going to give you an opportunity in just a few moments. And it's the most important thing you can do this side of eternity. See, a lot of people just live their lives and they're racing through it, you know, and they think that they get to the end of their life and they, and they die that there's a waiting room. You'll walk in and they'll go, all right, this is the waiting room for heaven. So you didn't take care of this down on earth, but you got one last chance here. So this is the room where you can seal the deal. Like right now, if you'll repent of your sins and you accept Jesus, then you can go to heaven. Uh-uh. It's too late then. There's no waiting room. You're just immediately, boom, you're in heaven. You're at the door. So take care of it on this side of eternity. All right, you all look awful. Are you okay? You still with me? <laughs> Must have gotten too serious there. Number four, run to help those going through a setback. Run to those going through a setback. How does Jesus answer them after they said, yes, we can drink the cup? Verse 23, Jesus said to them, you will indeed drink from my cup, but to sit at the right or left is not for me to decide. These places belong to those for whom they have been prepared by my father. When the ten heard about this, they were indignant with the two brothers. Oh, man. Jesus tells them, hey, those two seats, my dad gets to decide those. And then the other ten disciples, they catch wind of this, and they are ticked. They're like, are you kidding me? You do an end run around us trying to get the top two spots. What is up with you? Now the whole group is fighting. We've had a lot of fighting this last year, haven't we? What in the world? Everything's a fight. Maybe you've had your year turn ugly too. Some of you have suffered a setback in a job or a business. Mother's Day can be a painful holiday. Maybe you had to say goodbye to your mom. Maybe you lost your mom to COVID. My beautiful daughter-in-law, Felicity, lost her mom to COVID. Some of you are watching your mom's health go bad. Some of you lost a baby. Some of you maybe had a miscarriage or two or three or 10. And the word mom seems so far away. Maybe you wanted to be a mom and it never did happen. And now that you're older, you have huge disappointment. Then there's people where the word mom does not bring scenes of love and happiness and joy. If you had an alcoholic mom, an abusive mom, an absent mom. So mom doesn't always mean good, happy, wonderful. Sometimes it can mean fear, pain, horror. Maybe you're a mom that you're, you're, you got some toddlers or some teenagers. And you're like, I'm not a very good mom. I'm not patient. I yell a lot. Or some of you, maybe you don't know your mom. You're not close anymore. It's just drifted away. So Mother's Day isn't always happy. What could I possibly say that could make that better? Well, I have good news for you on Mother's Day. Jesus did not forget Salome. And Jesus did not push her away because of this power play she tried. On Easter Sunday, 
Salome is part of the resurrection story in the Bible. Check this out in Mark chapter 16, verse 1. It says, when the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of Jesus, and Salome brought spices so that they might go to anoint Jesus' body. Isn't that awesome? And then Salome witnessed firsthand the empty tomb. Going on to verse 6, it says, don't be alarmed. He said, this is the angel talking. You are looking for Jesus the Nazarene who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him, but go tell his disciples and Peter, he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. Salome got to physically see the risen Savior, Jesus. How many are looking forward to seeing Jesus when you get to heaven too? What a testimony she had for the rest of her life. I have come to encourage you this morning. You are never lost in the crowd with Jesus. He looks at you right now and he sees you and what you're going through. Jesus will never forget about you. And Pastor Todd says that all the time to me. Oh, forget about it. Jesus will never say that to you. Pastor Todd might, but Pastor Jesus will not. He never says, but I forget about it. I love Todd. How many love Pastor Todd? That guy, he is a beast. He's in Africa and Zimbabwe doing, you know, conferences and teaching pastors. Next thing I know, he's back here. He's doing a wedding. He's doing a funeral. He's doing some ministry. He's teaching a class. He has couples groups. Who does that? He's the energizer buddy. It's incredible. Love you, Pastor Todd. Number five, learn that greatness comes by serving. Last one. The other disciples are not happy. So verse 25, Jesus called them together. And he said, you know that the rulers of the Gentiles lorded over them and their high officials exercise authority over them. Not so with you. Let's stop there for a second. Did you catch that? He was saying the rulers, the, the government leaders, they lorded over people. They exercise authority over people. Hmm, have we ever seen any of that ever in our lifetime? The Bible says there's nothing new under the sun. See, whenever you see people lording it over people, trying to control people, guess what? That's not from God. That's not from Jesus. That's from Satan. That is evil. Because Jesus came to give us freedom. People want authority over people. People want to lord it over others. Following Jesus is the opposite. Luke 4, 18, Jesus said, I have come to set the captives, what? Free. Say it twice as loud. Come to set the captives, what? Free. Yes. All right. So continuing on, Jesus tells us how to live. He said, instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wants to be first must be your slave. Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. That's where we get the phrase servant-hearted leader. You serve. Mother's Day is very special for my wife Sandy and I. When Sandy and I got married, we said, well, let's wait two years to have kids. Anybody else ever done that? You're like, hey, let's go have some fun, let's travel, let's, you know, don't wanna worry about kids too early. So we waited two years. And then we started trying. And three more years went by. So then we started to get worried. So Sandy got checked, and I got checked, and we did fertility tests. And Sandy started using these ovulation predictors, you know. I'd be out mowing the lawn, and she'd be like, get in here now. I'm ovulating. Let's do this now. <laughs> I'm like, that's real romantic. <laughs> okay. I know, TMI probably, but you know. <laughs> Sandy had procedure after procedure done. Finally, they came back with a diagnosis, unexplainable infertility. They go, you're never gonna have kids. And at this point, we try for 10 years. I love my beautiful wife, Sandy. She's my California blonde I prayed for. And she, uh, but she gets her words mixed up sometimes. <laughs> and she would be explaining to friends on that, I could hear her on the phone, and she'd be like, we have unexplainable infidelity. And I'd be like, honey, 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 honey. <laughs> that makes it sound like we're cheating on each other and we don't know why. That's a, 
It's unexplainable infertility, baby. <laughs> Back there hating on me right now. <laughs> so we decided we would try to adopt. And we go through the certification process. We were living in Arizona at that time. And get that all done. We find an adoption lawyer. We go through the adoption agencies. We sign up for all of them. And my wife's sister had a baby, our niece, Charlie. So we helped watch Charlie as a baby. And that made things even more intense. It got so intense that we would take a stroller empty stroller and walk around our block in Glendale, Arizona Lord, would you put a baby in here? Pushing an empty stroller Neighbors would come up Oh, let me see the baby No, there's nothing, it's sleeping One day we got a call. Baby wanted to be adopted. Mother wanted to give it up for adoption. Close to our house, Thunderbird Sam, at the hospital. Things roll along and she changed her mind after the baby was born. Ugh. If you've adopted, you know what this is like. We had already done the nursery, got the diapers, got the formula, got everything ready. So our lawyer calls us again one time and he goes, are you willing to try again? We're like, I guess. He goes, well, I have a 15-year-old girl. She's from California, from Riverside. She's going to be here in town with her mom. She wants to meet with three couples. I got two. Do you want to be the third? We're like, all right. He goes, meet us at Marie Callender's. So we walk in. And I knew, just the way she looked at my wife, Sandy, this little 15-year-old girl, and they start talking, and me and the grandma, the, her mom, you know, we're just sitting there chatting because Sandy and the girl are connecting. And she said, well, a couple weeks, I'll let you know. She called back a few weeks later, and she said, I was wondering, Sandy, if you want to come out to Riverside in October and be in the room when the baby's born and cut the cord. Yeah, you can give the Lord a hand. <laughs> we have an open adoption. That means you stay in contact. So uh, we've stayed in contact with Melissa over the years and she lives in California. We live in California now. She came to Josh's wedding. We invited her to the wedding. And on Mother's Day, we always text her and say, you gave us the most amazing gift anybody could ever give. I remember we stayed in this hotel room with our baby right after he was born. It was so crazy. Uh, we went to the mall in Riverside because, you know, I'm tired of staying in the hotel. You have to wait three days in California before you can leave with the baby. And so we're like, what do we do? Because the hospital just released him. And we're like, okay, I guess we'll take this newborn baby. He's three hours old and we're in a hotel with him. Something felt wrong about that. So then we're like, well, let's go to the mall. <laughs> so we go to the Galleria Mall in Riverside, if you've ever been there. And we're walking around. So Sandy, your mom starts shopping, so I'm holding the baby. He's six hours old. So these women would come up and go, oh, a baby, how old is he? And I go, six hours. They're like, I'm calling 911. <laughs> like, I'm like, no, no, please don't call 911. We wait for three days after our son was born to finalize the adoption. And on Sunday, the third day, we drive over to Moreno Valley because we have a pastor friend there. We're like, oh, let's go to church. Let's go see Michael and Nan. So we drive over there. And we're sitting there holding our three-day-old adopted baby and our pastor friend speaks on how God adopts us all as his children. And he reads Galatians 4, 5. God sent Jesus to buy freedom. There's that word again, freedom. To buy freedom for us who are we're in bondage to the law so that he could adopt us as 
his very own children. And Sandy and I are just sitting there bawling. Do you think that was a coincidence? No. God orchestrated every detail of that for us to get a son. If you are waiting for a child, Sandy and I want to talk to you after the service. We want to pray with you because God can do it. How many agree? God can do it. We're almost done. The biggest miracle of our adoption story is this. Melissa, our birth mom, had decided when she found out she was pregnant, she was in denial for quite a few weeks. Then when she started showing, she's like, I gotta have an abortion. So she went to have an abortion. So they did some tests and they came back to her at the clinic and they said, we can't do the abortion. You're in your third trimester. It's illegal in the state of California. It shows you how much things have changed now. And that's when she chose us to be her baby's parents. When the baby was born, they did the calculations from when he was born and they said, that was a misdiagnosis. She was not in her third trimester. That baby, who's now 30 years old, we got married when we were 12, in case you're doing the math. <laughs> <laughs> he could have been aborted. The mistake the doctors made is why my son Josh is alive today. Yeah. Amen. And then the joke's on us, Sandy got pregnant five months later. <laughs> the plumbing worked. Does anybody here think maybe God orchestrates things in your life? You say, oh, it's never going to happen. No, it's going to happen. God works in secret ways. He works in mysterious ways. He works in ways you could never think of. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. His ways are higher than our ways. How many are so glad about that? All right, well, I'm coming into the close now. Should only be an hour or so. Just kidding. It reminds me of this elderly lady. She was well known for her faith. And she got up every morning. She'd walk out of her house and she'd stand there and she'd go, well, praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Well, wouldn't you know, next door to her lived an atheist. <laughs> so he would stand over in there and he would shout back and he'd go, I'm telling you, there ain't no Lord. Well, this went on all the time. He'd, she'd come out in the morning. Oh, praise the Lord. He'd be out there. There ain't no Lord. Well, one morning she stood out on her porch and she said, well, praise the Lord, but Lord, I'm having a hard time. I don't have no money for groceries. I'm going to run out of food. Oh, Lord, I know you can supply. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So the next morning she comes out to her porch. She's going to do the same thing and she stops and she looks and there's a box full of groceries. Oh, she goes to shout, praise the Lord. Ha, ha, that's what I thought was going to happen. The Lord supplied my need. Praise the Lord. On the other side of the bush, the neighbor jumps out. He goes, ah, ha, I told you there weren't no Lord. I put that box of groceries there. <laughs> and she's over there. She goes, oh, praise the Lord. I got a box of groceries and God made the devil pay for it. Praise the Lord. Give the Lord a big praise. If God can use Satan to get you some groceries, he can solve your problems. He can give you a miracle. He can give you progress. He can give you excitement. There is power when you get on your knees and pray. If you will speak words of encouragement to people, if you will declare what's possible in your life, the Bible says Jesus will make it happen. Can you say amen? Yeah. Amen. Would you bow your heads with me, please? Father, pour out your blessing on every woman here, every lady, every girl. Please give them your divine favor and blessing right now in the name of Jesus. And Jesus, for all those who are afraid, those moms who are hurt, those moms who have been passed over, who have regrets, Lord, encourage their hearts right now. 
Help them raise godly children. If you've never committed your life to Jesus, can I just ask you to take the step right now? Take the step right now. Just pray something like this silently from your heart. Here's the thing. God can see every thought. He can see what you're thinking. He knows what you're saying. Every whisper, even if you don't whisper it, if it's just in your heart. Jesus said, man looks at the outward appearance. I look at the heart. Just pray something like this. Say, Jesus, I'm not sure I understand everything about this, but I know one thing. I like what I've heard. So as much as I know how, I'm in. I'm in. Today's the day, man. I step across the line. Would you forgive me for my sins? Would you give me the power greater than myself to start making changes in my life? And I'm going to spend the rest of my life learning more about it. And Father, we thank you for your word in Jesus' name. Amen. If you prayed that prayer for the first time, the Bible says make sure you tell somebody about it. You can tell me, one of the other pastors here, Pastor Andre, Pastor Ken, Pastor Todd, or you can fill out a card to go on the app and you can tell somebody. But make sure you tell somebody, hey, I committed my life to Christ. Well, it's been so fun to be with you guys. Thank you. You were so fun. Sadie and I love you so much. Have an amazing week and an amazing Mother's Day. God bless you.